we're going to see the word reverse rearing its head here quite a bit. So what happens? The trial court gets it right. The trial court awards the land to Martin. The Virginia Court of Appeals reverses the trial court. Now, something interesting happens. The loser now, which is now Martin, uh, says, well, this involves a federal issue, the, the application of a treaty in a case. And so I am going to ask the U.S. Supreme Court to weigh in. So Martin's lawyer applies for certiorari to the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court issues the writ of certiorari. We generally call that, lawyers generally just call that granting cert, <coughs> decides to hear the case, and of course makes the easy decision that the trial court had it right, the Virginia Court of Appeals got it wrong. So the U.S. Supreme Court on this federal question reversed the judgment of the Virginia Court of Appeals, which had reversed the judgment of the trial court. Now what happens? You need to be familiar with a word remand. It's called a remand. When a higher court decides a case, they will send, it, it will send its opinion, its judgment, and the, and the record of the case back down to the lower court. And at that point, the lower court reacquires jurisdiction over the case. So you look at who did the U.S. Supreme Court reverse? Well, they reversed the Virginia Court of Appeals. So the Supreme Court sent its opinion, its judgment, <coughs> and the record back down to the Virginia Court of Appeals. The remand, that's what it's called to send a case back, the remand comes with what lawyers call a mandate. The mandate of a lower court is to follow the letter and spirit of the remand from the higher court. So these are all legal terms that we are throwing around here. Reverse, remand, mandate. The U.S. Supreme Court reverses the Virginia Court of Appeals, remands the case to the Virginia Court of Appeals. The Virginia Court of Appeals now has a mandate to apply the letter and spirit of the U.S. Supreme Court's opinion. That, of course, is not what the Virginia Court of Appeals does. So recall that Judge Rowan is no big fan of federal judicial power. He's especially no big fan of the Chief Justice of the United States, John Marshall. Rowan says this. Oh yeah, this, this is starting to sound like kids in a, in a sandbox now. Rowan says, you think I'm reversed? You think I'm reversed? You think I'm reversed? You're reversed. Yes, you heard that right. <laughs> the Virginia Court of Appeals reverses or tries to, anyway, reverses the U.S. Supreme Court decision reversing the Virginia Court of Appeals decision that reversed the trial court decision. That is what sets up Martin versus Hunter's lessee. Talk about an, right, an interesting uh, dynamic. <clears throat> At this point, of course, there's another application for certiorari that goes up to the U.S. Supreme Court because we still have the same case but where the allegation, of course, is that the Virginia Court of Appeals, which is the highest court in the state of Virginia, has issued a final judgment, keep this in mind, and got it wrong on a federal question. The Supreme Court again grants cert. And now they're going to try to decide, are they going to reverse the Virginia Court of Appeals decision that reversed them after they reversed the Virginia Court of Appeals after it reversed the trial court? If this sounds like some kind of comedy skit, you know, it is. Here, the issue now is, <clears throat> does the U.S. Supreme Court have the authority to review, have jurisdiction under the Article III of the Constitution to review cases coming out of state courts? Now, obviously, it's appellate jurisdiction. The Supreme Court's appellate jurisdiction would uh, extend to cases coming out of lower federal courts, but more about that in a minute. The question here is, can the Supreme Court hear appeals coming out of state court systems? I want to get out the, the modern rule here so we can bat this around. The answer to the question is yes, and we'll talk about why in a minute. The Supreme Court has jurisdiction under Article Three to hear cases coming out of lower courts in the, in the states, so states courts lower than the U.S. Supreme Court. On the condition, <coughs> three things. Get ready to write this down. Number one. It would have to be from the highest court in the state. The, 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 the federal courts owe some deference to state courts to solve these problems, to address these problems, to get it right. 
So the rule has developed that the U.S. Supreme Court would only exercise its appellate jurisdiction to hear a case coming out of the highest court in a state and not any lower court in the state. So there has, it has to come from the highest court in the state. That obviously is, that box is checked in Martin versus Hunter's lessee. Second, it must involve a federal question. The Supreme Court is, the U.S. Supreme Court exercises the judicial, judicial power of the United States, not of any state. So the U.S. Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction to entertain a question of state law. More on that later. I keep saying that, but we'll revisit this. Third, it has to be a final judgment. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. So those three things have to be met. The U.S. Supreme Court does have appellate jurisdiction under Article Three to entertain cases and to use its appellate jurisdiction to entertain cases if those cases are coming out of the highest court in the state they involve a federal question or an interpretation of federal law, and it's the f a final judgment from the highest court in the state. Why? It's actually pretty obvious from the structure of Article 3 when you think about it. Article 3 gives the Supreme Court, to, to, to end off where we started, primarily appellate jurisdiction. It has original jurisdiction and very limited cases. The founders who drafted Article 3 saw the Supreme Court as an appellate court, not as a fact-finding court or a trial court. Remember the question I asked, where are the appeals going to come from? Interestingly, lower federal courts, as you know, don't even have to exist. The only federal court that has to exist is the U.S. Supreme Court. So let's think about this. The only federal court that even has to exist under Article 3 is the U.S. Supreme Court. So we could live in a world where there's a U.S. Supreme Court and there is no other federal court. There are no district courts, federal district courts. There are no federal circuit courts. There is nothing but the U.S. Supreme Court. And yet Article 3 gives the Supreme Court primarily appellate jurisdiction. Again, Article 3 gives the Supreme Court appellate jurisdiction in a system where lower federal courts don't have to exist. So back to my question, where are the appeals going to come from? If they're not coming from lower federal courts, because we don't have to have lower federal courts, where are the appeals going to come from? When you, this is how a lot of constitutional issues get resolved, by looking at the structure that is set up by the Constitution. With the court concluded, this is ridiculous to say that we don't have appellate jurisdiction to entertain cases coming out of the highest court in a state on, a, on final judgment on a federal question. Because we have to have appellate jurisdiction over something, because the Article, Article 3 gives us mostly appellate jurisdiction. So. Uh, the Supreme, likely properly, the Supreme Court says we do, we can, we can review. Obviously, we can, if we have lower federal courts, and we do, we can hear appeals coming up through that system. But we don't even have to have that system. So the court says we also have jurisdiction under Article Three to hear federal cases coming out of states from the highest, right, from the highest court in any state. So the rule: the U.S. Supreme Court does have jurisdiction in this case. Uh, it did properly exercise its jurisdiction, so the Supreme Court once again reverses the Virginia Court of Appeals reversal of the U.S. Supreme Court's reversal of the Virginia Court of Appeals' reversal of the Virginia Trial Court. This time, the Supreme Court indulges a little trick, because they know that if they remand the case again to the Virginia Court of Appeals, the Virginia Court of Appeals will re-reverse the U.S. Supreme Court's reversal of the Court of Appeals' reversal, blah, 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 blah. So they're not going to, the, the Supreme Court says we're tired of playing this game, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to put the remand on a horse and send it right past the Virginia Court of Appeals all the way back down to the, back down to the Virginia Trial Court. So they bypassed the Virginia Court of Appeals this time. <laughs> they sent the case back to the Virginia Trial Court and said, you got it right the first time. After all this mess, you enter judgment in favor of Martin, and then the, this case is over. Now, Tragic, somewhat tragically in a historical sense. The, the trail went cold. People have tried to piece together what exactly happened after the, the final remand from the U.S. Supreme Court to the Virginia Trial Court. Um, apparently the, the property records are, are in such disorder that uh, historians have not been able to figure out what exactly, we, the, the, the trail went cold after that. However, that's what, that's what happened here. So the upshot, what, we're still talking jurisdiction here, is that the Supreme Court does have jurisdiction to hear a federal case on a final judgment coming from the highest court in a state. Now one comment, I'm skipping around here a little bit in the book. Uh, we're going to talk now about some other jurisdiction issues under McArdle and Klein. 
before we come back to the political question doctrine, which is quite involved. So I want to hit this jurisdiction thing before we do political question, which is a, yet another topic under under uh, Article 3. Uh, so we'll be talking about this in these other videos as well. Article 3, you think about the different topics you have to know. You have to know what judicial review is. I'll talk about that in the next video for, to review that. You have to know what judicial supremacy is, how that works. And you have to know these rules of jurisdiction. So, more on that coming up, and then after that, we will get to the political question doctrine. As always, uh, stay uh, safe and stay tuned.